Live, 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 live. We are live, guys. It's early. Kobe Sugihara for hardcore fans. I mean, <laughs> you've got to go back to like 2019. 2018, 2019. 2018, we hired you at Global? Or 2019? Yeah, that's, when, that's when I finished my master. Or, yeah, when I officially finished around my master's time. And, uh, I was about to say 2014, but that's not that long ago. It's 20. It feels long. 19 ish. 2019 ish. Yeah. And then I remember COVID. You were at my site, Global Colango Trials. We hired you just. I don't think you had any research experience, but Mm -mm. no, no, we don't get master's degree Mm -hmm. candidates applying that often. And I don't think we even needed a coordinator, but I talked to Monica, Mm who was the site director at that time. I said, you know what? We got to, I remember you were like somewhat persistent too to reach out to me. I kind of, do you remember the story better than I do? Because I remember pieces of it. (laughs) Uh, I just remember you kept... (laughs) You were persistent. I do remember that. Definitely. That was part of my plan. Um, I think you even got around to like using Instagram to get me. I did. I did. Because I, I first initially found you on YouTube when you had all your your uh, clinical yes. research videos. <laughs> uh, um, the algorithm on YouTube worked somehow. And you popped up on my on my YouTube. And, you know, just like everyone was asking themselves probably like, man, like, what is this guy really giving out free information? Or like, um, there's gotta be a catch to it or something. Behind the paywall, put your credit card. Exactly. 99 cents a minute. <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought it was. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm DMD on the side. I was like, Hey, trying to get into research, uh, any suggestions, which I'm pr- sure you had hundreds <laughs> of those questions at that time. Um, but yeah, I periodically checked in on you to, to make sure that, Hey, this guy is serious about something. Um, and obviously you knew a lot of people back then and you still know a lot of people now. Um, and so I was just like, Hey, maybe he can connect me with a potential employer. Maybe send me up with an intern, anything like that. Um, but just be persistent with it. So, you know, you know what? Thank God for social media. I have the direct messages. Do you? From, yes. all the way back from. Good. from Instagram. Good. I remember Good. now is on Instagram. So yeah. this is like a lesson in being persistent. Mm-hmm. And look at what can happen with your career, especially if you have an advanced degree. But this is someone with an advanced degree. Yesterday I interviewed Rick Young. He has a PhD. He's a mm-hmm. CRA Academy intern. He came out to Yuma. He talked about how he, with a PhD, mm-hmm. had to go out there and hustle to get his first job. Yeah. But the thing is, when you're an advanced degree holder... Once you're in, now your career will accelerate faster than your competition, your peers, because of the advanced degree. So the advanced degrees are worth something, but everyone thinks they make you skip the line and they don't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily make you skip the line. It just, you, you get more looks. You get more you get, potential. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that, that, that's never bad. So um, can't complain about that. Um, you always want to sweeten, sweeten your odds or your chances of, you know, being looked at, which is ideal. So um, flexibility is what, what I'd say it brings. Flexibility. So here's here's the... Uh, so you've been persistent because May mm-hmm. May 30th of 2018, that's when you first reached out. Yeah. And you said by watching some of your videos, um, uh, you're just asking for like advice, like what skills can I yeah. do? Yeah. It wasn't until... That was May 2018. It wasn't mm-hmm. until uh, months later. Yeah, a like couple you, months. Yeah, you followed up. You even asked in August of 2018, hey, just yeah. checking to see if you have any internships. Yeah. And then I said, no, not at the moment. Let me ask my other site. Mm-hmm. And then I said, you know what? Just send me your CV. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, we I... that was August 2018. And then we yeah. started just talking regular so yeah I, around that time you got hired <laughs> yeah. yeah that's crazy so three mm-hmm. may june july august like four months mm-hmm. you were and you even in in those direct messages you were saying you have an interview coming up with another company yep so you yep. kept staying like top of my mind even though we didn't need someone okay. so that when we actually did need someone you were like the first person in my head, especially with that master's degree, too. Of course, persistence. And I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure you didn't know I had that master's degree until I sent you that CV either. 
Um, because I don't think I, I advertised my masters. I th- you're right. You're right. I didn't. And so. um, then I told Monica, you know what? We do do a lot of psych studies here. Like that site was mm-hmm. mostly psych studies. Yeah. If not yeah. all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and masters. See, this is where Guru Nation does not understand because mm-hmm. psych CNS research is a little unique. But there's so much of it. There's mm-hmm. not enough workers in the space. Mm-hmm. And now you're an experienced psychometric raider with like what four or five years now of experience. Yep. yep. Well, I mean, funny thing, I look back on my undergrad and even my CC days, and I was dealing with depression scales back then without even knowing it because uh, we have to take our we have to take our research methods class in undergrad and at, and at my AA level, and my teacher. Um, he was actually working at UCLA, and even though he was doing uh, academic study research, he was actually doing clinical trials as well. But, you know, lo and behold, most people don't know what clinical trials are. They're not really <laughs> educated with it. And I was working with the, with the, the HAMD and the CSSRS specifically. Oh, even level. back then. Yeah, and I didn't even know about it. Um, but that's the only aspect that, that he allowed me to peer into. Um, so, I mean, that was back 2014, 2015-ish. Wow. So, and that CSSRS is used on like eighty percent of trials, even mm-hmm. not just psych. Yeah, like we have everything. some obesity weight loss studies. It's used mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's universal. universal, universal. And mm-hmm. did you know, like anyone can get that certification for free online right now? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. But they don't know. They. This is why we need to go mm-hmm. live with this stuff and like just tell people. There's yeah. so many advanced degree viewers and listeners watching right now mm-hmm. that are stuck and if they just did what you did i mean it's like a little bit of humility for maybe three to four months of like just understanding yeah. that you know just because you have a master's doesn't mean you can take it easy exactly. on the job search when you're not exactly. yeah. re- experienced yeah like, i mean that's that's when the when the real fight starts honestly i mean it, it shows what you're made of it shows um your mental it shows what you need to do in order to project yourself further. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's not easy to to always be persistent with things when you're always getting no's or you're hearing, no, I don't have anything for you right now or anything like that. But I I remember the first things that I I learned, you're like, man, you can try a hundred times, but it it only takes that one yes. Yeah. And 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 that's what it really is, honestly, when you want to break into clinical trials or research in general. And now you've already worked for two places since since global, mm-hmm. um, yeah. both psych. But maybe talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, getting in. I mean that that struggle to get in. Uh, you did have other interviews, and mm-hmm. um, just maybe just like a minute more on that, and then we'll move on to like what you actually learned, and then how what you're doing today. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't remember too much about the interviews because they, they were very brief and they're very generic in terms of like, oh, do you have experience? Oh, well, if not, then, you know, <laughs> where are you going to get your experience and stuff like that? And it was very generic questions. And, um, you know, like, do you have a GCP certification? Do you have you know, IATA training and all that type of stuff? So um, there's not too much insight I can give on those interviews just because they're so far back. Um, I just remember I was met with a lot of, hey, good luck, kid. Keep trying. (laughs) (laughs) Essentially. But each one you did, you learned more. Like, you probably learned, oh, what's GCP? Well, let me see if I can do that. It's free. Um, CSSRS was free. So Mm -hmm. we finally hired you, like, maybe four months later. Mm -hmm. And um, from day one, you know, it was just me, you, and Monica. We were a really small Mm -hmm. team there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you recall about the early days? You didn't stay that long. You stayed maybe a year, um, a little under a year, a little under a year. Because you know, I know right when COVID hit, yeah. that's when we kind of paused the site operations. Yeah. We weren't doing that well. That's a whole nother podcast. Why? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, I assume, started getting job offers from others because COVID like picked up the work for a lot of sites it did it really did with with the COVID studies and all that type of stuff Mm -hmm. but you know it also harmed most sites as well or the smaller sites as well global was like global was on that on the ladder unfortunately unfortunately. yeah 
but um the first things i remember from it honestly i was going in and, and i just wanted to be a sponge absorb everything um really connect the dots on the basics of of what am i what am i here for what am i doing what's the purpose of of, of these trials and how, how are they run um who are the main points of contact all that type of stuff and um you know monica was the director there and also the head coordinator um and again i i think you you told me before that she's the one who, who told you dan just give him a chance and see what he's all about stuff like that so i really do, do owe it to to monica again monica if you if you ever watch these thank you so much Hope you're doing oh, she'll, i'll send it to her <laughs> she knows she remembers good good she, she she was a she was a godsend she she held my hand through everything honestly um throughout through all the learning curves and everything so from coordinating to marketing to everything that that small sites need she was on it she taught me so uh, i owe a lot to her honestly wow yeah. big time yeah that was her first stint at uh you know she owns her own site now oh does she in la yeah hey, in hey. Um, santa monica they do i think it's called clarity monica okay. you're watching hit up kobe but um <laughs> her and her husband own the site very nice very nice i'll stroll through i'll, I'll give them a visit yeah yeah because you're out there in uh, pasadena so not too far well it's, it's on it's on the west coast so <laughs> i'll find my way over there if you leave at the right time, it's not too far. If I How leave in that? two minutes, I'm I'm good. <laughs> if you leave an hour from now, it's like <laughs> three hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so shout out to Monica on that one. Uh, and then that's not something out of the question necessarily for you either, right? At some point, like site ownership? Correct, correct, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we were talking about that even when you started with us. I remember you yeah. were going to do like a brewery slash site. Uh, remember that was like <laughs> the, interesting the deviation days. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a one yeah. drunken deviation podcast, yeah. Brad, the, our idea of doing that with that title comes from this guy right here. <laughs> Me and Kobe were drinking some belching beavers, mm. peanut mm. butter stout. That's peanut good stuff stouts. by the way. And so, totally. that was the idea that came up. Yeah. It would have worked. Yeah. Hey, it still can. You, you never know. I mean, <laughs> bre breweries put on hold for now, but you know, the site was a, a appealing because um, when you understand the basics of a site, the basic concepts, then then it becomes more um, tangible in, in a person's mind. Um, you just really got to figure out the business side of it because mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's easy in theory, right? You know, apply to the sponsor, get approved, get patients going, get paid essentially and then mm -hmm. keep the process going build upon your your clientele relationship sponsor relationship and then you know however you want to function your business but the business side is is what was keeping me from really saying you know i i think i really want to do this in terms of negotiating contracts negotiating um study events or, or radar skills or you know coordinating events that mm -hmm. that's the thing that that really kept me from pulling the trigger on it um and I felt like I was in a comfortable place in 2021. And then that's where I, I went to my current company to uh, see if that, that method or model was viable. Yeah. And being a, being a psychometric raider is unique mm -hmm. in the sense that, so when you started with us, if you start with the right site, meaning a small site, it's not going to be a prestigious site. It's going to be a small one, but that's where they actually need the help. Mm -hmm. So if you have a master's degree, if you have an advanced level degree, master's or higher, international equivalent, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. International medical graduate, same thing, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. a, a site doing psychiatric trials will put you, if they're smart, put you on trajectory mm -hmm. to be a raider, psychometric mm -hmm. raider, R-A-T-E-R, -E right? Not raiders like the Las Vegas raiders. <laughs> and the... People are like, yeah, every, we've discussed this so many times. People are still like, for, they're hearing it for the first time mm -hmm. because it is niche, but there's, it's a huge subsector of this industry is the CNS, oh, yeah. Oh, central yeah. nervous system studies. Oh, definitely. And, and I mean, like you said, it's a huge sector. It's, it's a vital role in getting the, the, the data for, for these trials. Um, and at first, you know, everyone hears about research and they're like, oh, let's be a CRA or I want to be a monitor or I, I was you too at one point. At one point, but that's only because <laughs> I didn't know 
the other exactly role, right exactly so the the continuing education in everything like you know everyone knows the monitor but do they know in-house monitors for sponsors or zeros um do they know in-house raiders exist also for CROs and, and sponsors as well um just like in-house coordinators but there's coordinators at sites there's raiders at sites there's um you know contract raiders there's mm-hmm. there's remote coordinating now there's obviously travel court or travel rating which which i'm in that role so there, there's so many different roles that explain that role a little bit for which those one? that don't know the travel rating so essentially, I, I'm just still doing all the scales for a particular uh, protocol. Um, but half the time when I'm not needed or when the site knows that the patient isn't going to be on site, uh, I work from home. Uh, when the site knows that the patient is going to be on uh, site for their visits, um, they'll contact the travel writer and say, hey, are you available for this date? Uh, if you are, we'll, we'll set up this site visit for the patient to come in. Um, you come in, you do just strictly the rating scales, and you know, well, once you're done, you're done. So, and you go like locally, you fly locally, where... fly different states, um, wh- wherever the sites are needed. And the so you can go out. like East Coast, correct? Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now they try to limit that or they try to keep it like regional or uh, it's just, just whatever. Depend. It just depends on, on, on the model that or the department that you're in. So some will do it based regionally. Some will, there's sometimes there's a one-off. Maybe you need to go East coast uh, for a couple of visits to cover for a raider, you know, um, because there's not enough depends. people, right? There's not enough qualified yeah. raiders doing yeah. that stuff. Well, I mean, I know for my current team, there's only f- let's see five full-time raiders that um, we currently have and we go across the, the the united states so now that you've been doing rating for like four or five years and can you talk about some of the scales you do the we mentioned cssrs so what are some of the other ones you or you've done all of them yeah so currently we're focusing on alzheimer's trials um and it's really um cognitive intensive based uh, scales um, but the ones that I do really like are the clinical scales because they're semi-structured um, and, and you have the freedom to really um, dig up as much answers as you feel is necessary for the data. Um, so the scale in particular for Alzheimer's scales that I've seen being used 90% of the time is the CDR, the clinical dementia rating. Uh, and you get to talk to both the informant or the study partner and the patient just to corroborate information to see where the, the patient's at uh, uh, in terms of if they are MCI stage or are they more a little bit more severe um, that's mild it, cognitive impairment for those yep. if yep. anybody has an advanced degree you should learn Alzheimer's yep yep it, it's learn the it, scales ADAS cog CDR like Kobe said that's the gold standard the ADAS cog is another one for those kind of mm-hmm. trials uh, MMSC, it's MMSC. It's, I remember yeah. those. Oh my gosh, I used to do those too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The MMSC <laughs> is, a, is a very straightforward, simple. If, if you want to get into cognitive testing, that that's the the first one you should you should look at. Well, the ADAS cog is the one where they point to those blocks, right? Like in the pattern. Uh, that's the MCCB. MCCB. Ah, I did that one too. See, I don't yeah. remember what they're called because that's what the <laughs> that's the problem of being a generalist. You do too much, you can't retain a lot of information, but. If I were to do a 10 minute refresher, I would remember. So yep, yep. the one where they point to the blocks and then the word list, right? And then yeah, the, they the memorize ADAS-COG is the word list. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a desk cog? The ADAS cog is the word list. Okay. Um, okay. Some, sometimes the, the sponsors will mix that in with the MCCB as well. Um, yeah. I remember MCCB doing that in myself. I was yeah. like, this is hard enough for like non mild cognitive <laughs> <laughs> what if you're ADHD? It's not easy either. You can't keep up. You can't keep up. <laughs> That's how it is. But um, MCCB is, is very long. It can be very long. Um, yeah. I think the, the longest I took on that, and I think this was partially due to sponsor um, requests for having different um, scales in the MCCB. It took me up to two and a half hours to administer that, that whole thing. I remember those. Okay. Yeah. Well, are most of these recorded? in your experience mm-hmm. or Correct. is it like half and half like what what's the new standard now yeah um for the most part everything is recorded everything um, training's recorded um 
you know, interactions with the patients are recorded. Um, the only but thing like your scale recorded. that you do, and then you upload it somewhere, and then a mm-hmm. central raider, mm-hmm. which we got to get into, yeah, <laughs> reviews it, right? Or they yeah. they are able to review them, but right. I assume they don't review most of them, just when there's a discrepancy or something. Um, I, I believe that the, the typical process, because I've never been a central raider before, is, but what I have experienced is when you're initially put on a study, um, they'll review your initial submissions first. So maybe first two, first three to see if you're administering by their protocols, by their guidelines. And then after that, they'll generally periodically review just to make sure you're, you're still maintaining those those uh, high standards that are set. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and again, they oftentimes like, say, like call you, set up a call with you mm-hmm. if they have issues. Yeah. I just did this two weeks ago. I'm a raider for a depression study. I did mm-hmm. a mattress. And uh, Rogers, I like that. one patient well, between two weeks, like dropped 15 points. Yeah. And they're like, probably like, what, what, what's going on with the score? Tell me. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. they were like, fill out this form um, mm-hmm. to explain. And like, they told me on the Zoom call, it's very good. You documented well, because there's yeah. no way I would have remembered what patient told me. Definitely. But in the source, I wrote like I write almost verbatim what they're telling me, the patient. Same. So then I was able to pull up, okay, well, this is what she said. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, it's yep. good that you document it. Because a lot of the sites we talk to, they don't document yeah. like mm-hmm. the details. So then we mm-hmm. don't know like what the score really should have been. So we determined that my score was like correct, plus or minus like two or three points. Which is really good. Which is really yeah. good. <laughs> so, so that 15, and what? okay, let's say it's 12. She's mm-hmm. still improving mm-hmm. like a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, so documentation... Yeah. It still still applies. All the important. Alcoa, GCP, all that stuff still applies to the Raiders. Extremely important. Extremely important. I, I remember I had a, I was on a schiz- inpatient schizophrenic trial, and Ooh, we were doing the pans. Fun. Yeah, those are fun. Those are the fun <laughs> days. Pans are fun. Um, so I was this. It was one of my regular patients. So you know, as a Raider, you get to fill out your patients. You get to fill out the informants, and and you you have the general scores in your head. Um, where they where they kind of float around and so um this participant obviously schizophrenic in in the inpatient so um it was unique because the first pans um that's kind of when when they kind of scope things out if the patient's the good candidate all that type of thing and i built a really good rapport with him um and even to myself things weren't adding up because even though he was inpatient he still held a job or was able to hold a job which is very rare for paranoid schizophrenics mm. to maintain. Um, it almost impossible. Like it's all almost mm-hmm. like a unicorn. Seeing exactly that. right. And so when when he was on the recording for the pans, they're like, "Hold on, something's not adding up." Um, you say he's severe enough for an inpatient study, yet he's able to hold a job. He's able to do all these social things. What's going on here? And I said, "Okay, well, well I'll, I'll break everything down for you. I've called the family members. I've done my due diligence. I've I've recorded all his answers on that little." hands tablet that you guys want me to and we can talk this through and i'll rationalize my decision and that was like the one case that documentation really saved my butt in because you have to document everything and it, it's not concept, just on the tablet it's everything outside of it as well with the informants yeah um, on the, the crf forms everything else that adds to the story of these patients can you imagine not documenting like the answers and just documenting the score. I mean, you would have to go back and remember, and who knows yeah. how many you do. Yeah. You know, you would have never remembered remember. at this visit, this patient said this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So documentation is super important for, for rating skills. Super, super important. important. Okay. And I mean, it, it serves as evidence as well um, to not only for data evidence, but evidence to show that you're administering correctly as well, asking the right questions, getting the necessary information out. And basing your scores off their, um, off their answers. So you're the site raider, right? We've kind of briefly mm-hmm. skirted around this idea of the central raider, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is the sponsor appointed. Usually they use a vendor. There's like right. two or three big ones. Right. They always merge, so their names change. But yep, it's yeah. the same groups. Mm-hmm. Um, these are central raiders, so they're. Yeah. Like I have a lot of opinions about Central Raider. Okay. Maybe a story is best. So we have this depression study right now, and mm-hmm. we had a patient, and at the site, 
it's either me or Jaime, who's our nurse practitioner, that does all the skills right now. Okay. Uh, Dr. Fox, we're trying to get you going, man, if you're watching uh, soon. So I've done all the skills with this lady, right? Um, good rapport. Mm -hmm. Pleasant. Pleasant patient. Not... Mm -hmm. Nothing like unusual. Nasty, nothing like no, nasty. no, like the opposite. Like if you yeah. had to pick one, nice or mean, she's nice. Good, good. Everything's fine. Like, hey, we're gonna put you in front of the central raider. Like, mm -hmm. let's schedule it. Mm -hmm. They're not affiliated with us, mm -hmm. but they have to confirm that my scores are correct. Right. So they want to make sure you present similarly when they interview you as you did today with me. Mm -hmm. So she's like, all right, perfect. So they they do it. I'm not around. They mm -hmm. they schedule it probably mm -hmm. at her home, yep. somebody from some prestigious place, uh, <laughs> which I won't name. <laughs> and then the patient texts me. And okay. this is a, out of character for this patient. Mm -hmm. She texts me, why did you put me in front of this Karen? Wow. <laughs> she was texting while in interviewing assessment? me. Oh, my God. Yeah. There were dogs barking in the background. <laughs> and it was clear she could not care about my situation my goodness. and she was arguing with me that the meds i'm taking are not correct <laughs> and so i was like thinking to myself and i brought it up to the sponsor like hey mm -hmm. we almost lost this patient if i didn't have mm -hmm. a rapport like i don't have mm -hmm. this kind of rapport with everyone because i don't see all of them all the time mm -hmm. but this one happened to be involved with every visit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. luckily yeah. she didn't quit because of that the rapport yeah yeah, yeah but imagine if like it There's wasn't a the case. She would have quit. She oh, definitely. Quit. Right on the so spot. I had, to, I had to argue for her case. We did get yeah. her randomized, and she's in the mm -hmm. study doing great. Mm -hmm. But that's the central raider Correct. who Correct. doesn't care, I think, mm -hmm. at least in this example. So long story to ask you a question. <laughs> Do you think site raiders will ever be replaced by central raiders? Uh, I don't think they're going to be replaced. Um, I think each has their role, um, depending on the study and the sponsor. Um, I can argue for both sides. I can see why a central rater would be um, useful and beneficial and yeah. efficient, uh, maybe for schizophrenic trials. Another example, I, I, for another trial, um, we would do all the assessments as a site rater, um, and they would schedule an interview for the PANS solely for their CNS rater. Um, just to make sure that everything's, like you said, lining up with what we're reporting. Um, so in those studies, I can definitely see it. I don't think that they're going to fully um, eliminate the site rater role. Um, they just don't have that much time in a day to do all the assessments, honestly, um, with all the sites so you, out there as well. So you think the jobs, regardless, site rater, central mm -hmm. rater, is pretty safe, no matter Correct. what? Yeah. And have you ever considered being a central raider? I know they're hiring also. Uh, it's popped up in my mind, but at that point, it's it's kind of like, you know, depends on, on if you really want to just be talking to random patients here and there across the country and, <laughs> um, you know, not really having a rapport. Um, I've heard some of the, <laughs> the assessments that go down and it, it doesn't get too pretty sometimes. So. Um, it just depends. So you're yeah. basically confirming my anecdotal story of <laughs> they don't really know how to have rapport. Maybe they're not. There's no incentive for them to have rapport. I mean, I I think they try and establish rapport within the little time that they have with the patient. Um, it's kind of just like they hop on to the to the tablet or whatever they're doing, and even though that they're there for the assessment, they kind of have to make do with mm -hmm. what they have. And a big portion yeah. does come down to the patient. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, if they're administering any certain type of skill, they're obviously certified as a CNS or not CNS. I'm sorry, as a central rater. Mm -hmm. um, so their capabilities there clinically are there. It just depends. Are they able to navigate socially? I think it comes down to that aspect. Yeah, there's a lot. That could be a whole another podcast just there's on a that. Lot. There's a lot. So the scales you did. Because mm -hmm. I can't remember at Global, at our site, mm -hmm. which ones you did, which ones you didn't. And I remember we got you set up with some. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember the, the first skill that, that you threw at me was the pants. Um, wow. Uh, did you shadow me during one or two? or No. No? I remember this wow. because um, it was my first patient. And you're like, hey, 
first patient today. How you feeling? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And, and you just kind of like, I think it's good you get experience. I'm like, all right, cool. Just throw me in there. Um, you gave me the PANS booklet. Uh, you said, <laughs> brush up on this. Go ahead and uh, tell me how it goes. <laughs> and it went so, well. So it went well. It did. And you um, fell in love with the rating. <laughs> It, it, it was actually, it was fun for the first time because, you know, um, after that first patient, um, I was able to, to think more clearly and be like, okay, well, I could connect the dots in terms of if I need to get information for this, I can administer or I can ask questions this, frame it this way. Um, and I knew that every patient wasn't going to be the same. So mm-hmm. a bad patient doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, I, I'm in it for the long run, always getting bad patients. And, you know, good patients doesn't always mean you're going to have a boring career just getting these simple answers out. So um, I, I saw the the variabilities in ratings. And then at, at your new at your new job when you when COVID kind of shut down global mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you worked for this other company that mm-hmm. does psychiatric trials, big mm-hmm. site. Mm-hmm. Um, they put you on all the other skills. I'm assuming. Correct, correct. Everything, you know, borderline depression, still with schizo. Um, borderline was fun, the, the Zan PPD. Was, you know, was... I've never done a borderline study. Really? Yeah. It's, it's very fun, honestly. You think I'd enjoy it? No. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, Why? no. The patients are sometimes, well, not sometimes, most of the majority of the time, the patients are headaches because you never know what they're going to do. You never know if they're going to be coming in for these visits. You never know how they're going to be acting at these visits. Uh, I remember I had a patient who came in for her scheduled visit. Two minutes later said, oh, I got to leave. Just up and left. We try to keep calling her. Hey, are you going to come back? We understand you have a life. You got to take care of things, whatever. She's like, I'm on the road to Vegas. I'm out. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, (laughs) So it's like we're used to unpredictability with schizophrenia, oh, yeah. oh, depression yeah. also, and Alzheimer. Yeah. They're all tough to get. Like you get you know, a lot of no shows in psych, no matter yeah. what. But borderline, yeah, I've never done one, and I've always been interested in. Do it, do it. Yeah, get your experience with borderline. <laughs> I was always told like those patients you need to really watch out for. Yeah, they're, they're unpredictable, like legitimately unpredictable. I know schizos are unpredictable, but there's there's a certain limit and certain type of uh, boundaries that, that you understand with that a certain schizo patient, like a paranoid schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. The worst that they, they're going to do is lock themselves in the room. And if they're maybe suicidal, that's something you have to watch out for as well. Um, but borderline, you never know if they're happy and chip, chippy the one minute and then they just bolt out the door the next does their mood change like that is like but how how is it Sometimes. from different from bipolar um the episodes aren't as severe as bipolar uh, i would say mm-hmm. um there's also attachment issues with borderline and and that gets dove into with like the the zan bpd and, and those skills type of thing attachment issues yeah yeah and so different than ptsd Correct. Correct. Yeah. See, that's where there's a lot of overlap in these mm-hmm. things because we just screen filled a patient. When was it? Last week. Mm-hmm. One of her diagnoses was borderline, but she yeah. also had PTSD, anxiety, bipolar, and it mm-hmm. was a depression study. So we didn't yeah. get past the screening visit with her. But after she left, I was talking to a coordinator. I don't know how that mm-hmm. patient is borderline with all those other diagnoses. Is it possible? Well, well, I mean, it, it's hard enough to diagnose the primary indication accurately mm. since most of these patients are comorbid and they have multiple um, indications that were prob- maybe, and I hope, uh, clinically diagnosed. Um, mm. But, you know, it's always up to the rater or, or the, the site PI, whoever is actually diagnosing them on that fir- first visit to, to really be able to to get to that nitty gritty and and really nail down where everything started so like if a depression episode started before um anxiety we can safely rule out that anxiety is secondary to depression um stuff like that so and those are all the things that you do correct correct do you do a lot of the skids too yeah mini and skids yeah oh, you yeah. do them yeah yeah i've been doing i have one a day later <laughs> i have a skid <laughs> later today yeah the, the skids are, are are a little bit 
easier than the mini, I, I will say. Minis are are more detail oriented and you really have to check every corner with the patient uh, per se, because um, it, it goes through um, essentially the same thing as a skid, but just into more detail. Um, so, yeah. If someone's watching right now and say, mm -hmm. you know what, all this stuff sounds interesting. Um, yeah. I'm an advanced degree holder, but I don't have research experience. I want to get in and try to do some of these skills. Mm -hmm. These rating skills, depression, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, bipolar, borderline, whatever. Mm -hmm. What's like two or three things they need to do, like immediately? Go first, get your GCPs and your and your basic IATAs and all that type of stuff. That, free. For free. It shows <laughs> that you're willing to do training on your own to, you know, start your research career uh, and then start looking at maybe local sites or maybe if there are remote sites start looking at that and just being persistent with it honestly um hey i don't have experience i'm willing to learn um i'm willing to be an intern uh do you have any availability do you know anyone who's available or who would want to take an intern stuff like that would you go in person yeah depending on what type of site i was looking for in terms of like local site or a psychiatric site or inpatient unit or something like that um, I'd first contact the site, maybe through email, um, send maybe a CV, um, and then ask if I can drop by and, and see if I can shadow or something like that, honestly. Hmm. Um, interning is, is, is the best tool, honestly. You get to learn everything. So. And what what is the, now that you've been doing this like five years, maybe longer, mm -hmm. right? Um, about five years, what are, are, this job is such, there's such a demand for this role. There's not enough. Raiders out there, Raiders. whether site or central. Yeah. Um, I imagine like you're getting frequently hit up by recruiters or. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I would say weekly, at least five weekly. offers. Weekly. Yeah. Weekly. How are they reaching you through LinkedIn or how are your email? Through LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn. Um, yeah. So um, weekly, th there's a decent amount of offers. It just depends on if you know the lingo and research. Um, you then you can really deduce what they're really asking for. Sometimes they say, we're looking for a research specialist. Okay, well, I mean, that's a very, very uh, vague but specific term. Um, and they always leave you on that cliffhanger. Let me know if, you, if you're interested in this in this opportunity. Okay, well, well, you know, we can see what that's about. Is it a coordinator specialist? Is it a raider specialist? Is it marketing? What, like, what kind of specialist are, are we looking for? So um, typically it, it's a sub by position or a, a rating position that, that I get offered. So um, if you fill out your, your LinkedIn profile tailored to the job that you want, you will get offers uh, pertaining to, to that skill set, to that job that you are looking for. So, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then being a raider, diversity is important, right? Like all the studies I'm on now, they're, they always ask us how many, Hispanics can you enroll? How many Native mm -hmm. Americans? How many mm -hmm. Asians? How many African Americans? Yeah. So these are like important metrics and numbers for sponsors. Correct. Being a Pacific Islander, right? You're Asian American, Pacific Japanese. Islander, Japanese. Japanese. Yes. Do, do you think that helps? And maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Does that help with rapport for, let's say, other Asian patients or yeah, have you sometimes. noticed anything like personally? Um, it just depends, honestly. Um, when, when I was really working at my second company and I was handling screenings a good portion of the day, um, I, I found that the, the people of color were a little bit more forgiving in, in those screening interviews and stuff like that. And it wasn't just like, oh, well, you're just doing this because this is your job and you have to do it. So uh, maybe a little bit, but it wasn't to the point where I was like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm Asian. I'm, I'm glad I'm Hispanic. So. <laughs> it maybe was more subtle or more nuanced than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause there's this, and I actually have subscribed to this theory that if we want more diverse patients, we need more diverse research staff. Definitely. It definitely, definitely. helps. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you want more, Spanish speaking patients, guess mm -hmm. what? Spanish speaking staff would be a great idea. Uh, Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Spanish speaking Definitely. raiders, we talk mm -hmm. about rare of the rare, like pulling oh, yeah. a Luka Doncic prism 
out of a pack. It's Definitely. hard enough to find mm-hmm. trained raiders. Yeah, and, and now I'm like bilingual. Whew. That that that's like the the jackpot right there, isn't it? The yes. Uh, one of my good colleagues, um, he has been pushing for this at every place that we've been to, enrolling Spanish speaking patients because this population is untapped, and um, unfortunately, I'm not fluent in it. So I'm excluded in this jackpot of Raiders, but I for those who are, <laughs> if you are, you, you can set yourself up potentially really, really nicely. Do you uh, know how many Latinos in clinical research viewers are like international medical graduates, like doctors yeah, yeah, from Latin and America? Exactly. And, and that's what he is. He's a foreign MD. Um, I met him at my second, my second company. Um, and He's one of the the most dedicated, hardworking people in research that I know. So wow, uh, foreign MDs, yeah, they, they, that's where it's at, honestly. They don't even know. Like, mm-hmm. I'm guessing this friend of yours stumbled into it on accident, also. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. See, you're different. You discovered research. You were saying because probably because of the education they had you do research. Mm-hmm. I remember this now in our interview. Yeah. You didn't stumble into this. You no. intentionally found sure. sought a career in research. That's yeah. unusual. Yeah. Um, I mean, now that I look back on it, it is unusual because most people just stumble into it. Stumble, um, like 90%. Correct. Correct. There's that there's few 10% that really understand <laughs> what is going on and what they're getting into. And Yeah. Yeah, I yeah I did my research on it like like, like the DMs show. Um, I was the receipts we got the receipts guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got dates yeah. and everything, so that yeah. shows the persistence. Kobe, thank you so much. Of it's always nice to talk to uh, former employees, even if it was just less than a year. I do remember because <laughs> we were so small. It was just me you and Monica. Definitely remember that good. live Halloween live stream, like five hour long. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's a record of it somewhere on there. There is. It's on there. We I forgot what you were. I was the Joker. My I wife did my makeup. Well. I forgot. I remember you were also dressed Maybe up a Ninja we just, or something with a backpack or something. I don't know. We just went live for six hours. This was before Streamyard made it really easy. This was mm-hmm. OBS, and you were helping me with that. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, Kobe, I can't figure this out, man. Like, it's showing like infinite screens open. This is, I'm going to have a seizure. <laughs> and you're like, ah, yeah. oh, let's fix this. <laughs> That's what I do. I fix problems, man. If you guys have a problem, I fix it. I fix it. All yeah. that stuff's coming back to me now. That's yeah. cool, man. It's nice to uh, connect with you. If anyone's interested in learning more about Kobe, inquiring about his services, or just networking with him, you're going to have a lot of people. Wanting to just network. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. His LinkedIn's underneath. And definitely. anything else you want to add? No, it, it's always nice catching up with you, Dan. Um, you know, uh, currently currently looking for um, a new position, uh, potentially maybe sub by position. Um, definitely want to stick to the ratings. Um, remote rating. Um, remote. That's something that no one should be afraid of, honestly. Um, we might have some opportunity with my site because uh, Dr. Fox is one that we're going to put on. See, me and Jaime, the owners, we, mm-hmm. we're doing it now. But if we get more studies, we just don't have time to do of course. all of, of course. them. Yeah, and that's where the re- remote rating comes in handy as well. Yes. You know? um, so don't be afraid of it if, if you guys want to get into remote rating or just ratings in general. Just Just go out. Uh, Kobe, send me your CV, man. Let's do this. Um, updated. And then anyone who wants to connect, obviously Raiders are in hot demand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hit up Kobe. <laughs> Amazing, man. You still go to breweries? Not anymore. Not anymore. You know that was a phase. Uh, I don't think it was a phase. I, I go there every once in a while, but not as frequent as 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 I could. So, okay. Okay. Uh, you know. Still play cornhole? You had that Pokemon set. Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh no, the dragon. Oh, ball. the the yeah. uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. What was dragon it? Ball. Dragon, dragon Ball. ball. There yeah. we go, man. That have, was fun. We used to play cornhole on the site parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> we a good times. Yeah. I bet you yeah. haven't done that since. No, 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 no. Me, me and my friends, we frequently play. We, we play disc at the golf. site. Uh, no, not at the site, but just at just the site is what I'm saying. Like well, during work. 
That was the Lake last Cornhole. One. Yeah. See, yeah. it's only a Dan Severa type of site where that even goes down. Maybe Brad yeah. Hightower. <laughs> well, I mean, we we had our sprints too because because you would oh, brag about. Oh, we had sprints. <laughs> but see, I was getting old already, so you beat me. Here are the excuses. Here's the excuses. Uh, you were fast, man. You were fast too. You're you're fast too. <laughs> I was, surprised. I was surprised. I remember that. See, the previous coordinator to you got cocky. Uh-huh. We did a sprint. It's on video. Uh-huh. And I smoked him. And I was <laughs> 10 years older than him. But yeah. that was like three years before you, oh, maybe okay. two. Okay. So, you know, I fell off a little after that and <laughs> let no, the weight go. The, you still had the step. You had the step. So you're good. You're, you're still so good. I was competitive then. Yeah. I, yeah. I blocked it out of my mind when I lose. So can't <laughs> I do remember. That I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I do that. It's too. all coming back to me, Kobe. But awesome, yeah. man. Everybody go connect with Kobe Thank right so now. Uh I'll be talking to him about maybe doing some rating skills too. Maybe if we get that borderline study or something. <laughs> uh, That'd be interesting. All right. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Go connect with Kobe right now. Bye-bye. Thanks, man.